Hello and welcome fellow coders! Thanks for joining me today on my second quest of my Golang tutorial beginner series. And today we are going to talk about variables. Again. Well, that's only halfway true. I'm going to talk about all the basic types of variables that Golang has to offer. But you should be familiar with what variables are and how they get declared and initialized. So if you haven't watched my last video, make sure to check it out before you watch this one. But now, finally, without further ado, let's get into it. Now let us talk about the basic variable types in Go. The list of basic types can be divided into three categories. Boolean types, well actually there's just one Boolean type, numeric types and text types. Let's start with the Boolean type. Boolean variables are actually the most easy type in Golang. They simply store either the value true or the value false. So they tell you if a statement is true or is false. But despite their simplicity as variable types, they actually have a huge amount of use cases. You can check whether a number is greater or smaller than a given other number, if a client is connected to a server, if an entered password has a minimum length of 3, or if you are subscribed or not. See what I just did there? I think you get the point. You can change the value of a boolean variable to only true or false. If you try to store something different into the variable, the compiler will complain. All basic types of Go have a so-called zero value. So if you declare a variable but don't initialize it, the value is automatically set to its zero value. For boolean types, the zero value is false. That is basically everything I can tell you about the boolean basic type. So let us continue with the next basic type, which is the numeric type. Numeric types can be split into four subcategories. Unsigned integer values, signed integer values, floating point values and complex values. And in addition, each of these has also different sets of subtypes. Let us quickly go over them. First let's start with the unsigned integer values. Unsigned integer values can hold positive numeric values. The first of the unsigned integer types is the u int 8 type. The u stands for unsigned, so positive values only. The int stands for integer and the 8 stands for 8 bit. One bit can hold the value 0 or the value 1. So you have 2 to the power 8 different possible values you can store in an 8 bit variable. Hence values from 0 up to 255. I will not go into greater detail here because this is a course about teaching you the basics of Go and not about computer science in general. If you want to learn more about how computers store values, just pick up any book about the fundamentals of information technology. Or use this new technology called the internet. I'm sure you have heard about it. So let's continue with our unsigned integer value. One cool or rather uncool thing you need to keep in mind is that variable types have a maximum value. In our case it is 255. So what if we add 1 to a new int 8 variable holding the value 255? Technically we haven't talked about operators yet, but I'm sure you can understand what happens if you use the add operator to add a second number to our first number. No real magic here. But if you run the code you can see that the output is actually 0, which is the minimum value of the u int 8 type. So if you exceed the maximum value of a type, it will start from the beginning. And that can be quite problematic. Imagine you use a database and you can only store 256 users in it and as soon as you store the next one, the first one will be overwritten. Yeah, I know, databases are a lot smarter than that, but you get the point, right? So always keep this in mind and choose your types according to your needs. Next we have the uint16, the uint32 and the uint64 types. These are pretty straightforward. Compared to the uint8 type, you can store 2 to the power of 16 bits, 2 to the power of 32 bits and 2 to the power of 64 bits respectively. Here is a list of value ranges you can store in each of these types. But what if you want to store negative values, like minus 1? To store signed values, you need to use the signed integer type. Much like the unsigned counterparts, you can also store 2 to the power of 8, 16, 32 or 64 values in them. But the difference lies in their minimum and maximum values. Let's again take the 8-bit type for an example. You can store values ranging from minus 128 up to plus 127. And again, if you add 1 to the maximum value of the u int 8 variable, you get the minimum value. In our case, it's minus 128. There is one more thing I would like to mention. Golang has some machine dependent types. These are int, u int, and u int pointer. Machine dependent types means that their size varies depending on your machine. If you take int for an example, it is 32 bits in size on a 32 bit machine, and unsurprisingly, 64 bits in size on a 64 bit system machine. The same goes for u int and u int pointer. By the way, do not care about the uint pointer type yet. Since we haven't talked about pointers yet, it does not make sense to explain this type to you. Just for reference, this type is big enough to hold any pointer address, but for now just ignore it. As a general rule of thumb, if you want to store integer values, always use the int type, unless you specifically want to store an unsigned integer value or a value of specific size. That is actually something I picked up from the tour of Go. Well, if you don't trust me, trust Google. Up next we have the floating point numbers. If you want to store any kind of decimal number, like for instance 3.1415, you need a floating point variable type. 
and in Go the common the flavor of float32 or float64. Again, they basically only differ in size of values they can store. Float32 numbers range from 1.2 times 10 to the power of negative 38 up to 3.4 times 10 to the power of positive 38. But if you need more precision, you can use the float64 type, which has a range from 2.2 times 10 to the power of negative 308 up to 1.8 times 10 to the power of positive 308. So from very small numbers up to extremely high numbers. Floating point numbers can be declared in a few ways. For instance, you can use the point notation like 3.1415 or the scientific notation using the letter E, which translated means 3.14 times 10 to the power of negative 2. So if you print that out, it gives you the value of 0 0.0314. And the last type of numeric variable types are the complex numbers. Now I'm sure that for some of you, complex numbers are something you came across during your studies. But if you are like me and you write code that solves business problems, you basically never came across complex numbers. So the only thing I'm going to explain is that complex 64 types have a float 32 real and imaginary part, whereas complex 128 types have a float 64 real and imaginary part. Numeric values also have two aliases, so types that are built into the language that are actually just numeric types. And that are byte as an alias for u and 8 and rune as an alias for int 32. This might not make much sense now, but as soon as we talk about text types, it will become clear why the programmers of Go did that. As for the zero values of numeric types, it is always a number zero. So no matter if you declare a new int, an int, a float64 or even a complex number. You can see that the value is always zero. Lastly, we have the text types. Before we talk about text types though, I need to get one thing out. Talking about text is a huge topic when it comes to programming. As simple as text may be, it is a lot more complex than you might think. Humans are awesome when it comes to using text to express themselves and process spoken or written text to communicate. As for computers though, they are not. They can simply use zeros and ones. And since there are so many different languages, special letters, signs and even pictures expressing feelings humans have invented, computers must be able to understand all of them. And that is no easy task whatsoever. Text must be encoded and decoded. In easy terms that means translated between zeros and ones and human readable text. And there are a variety of different encoding types. You might have already heard about the ASCII or the UTF-8 standard. If I would go into greater detail here, I could probably fill up a whole hour or two. But since that is way out of scope for an introduction of the Go programming language, I will try to make it as simple as possible. But now let's get into it. In program language terms, text is usually called a string. In Go, strings are a sequence of bytes. And in technical terms, a sequence is usually called an array. As we know from before, a byte is actually a U and 8 alias. Now the type alias might become clearer to you. Technically, you can store any kind of bytes into a string, but in most cases, strings are used to store UTF-8 encoded types, hence letters. This might sound incredibly technical to you, so let's start with a super simple example. You can treat every letter, even the space, as part of the text sequence. So, hello world is an array of 11 elements, so 11 bytes. The first element is the H letter, the second element is the E letter, and so on and so forth. You can even print out single elements of the string like this. And to no surprise, it prints out the byte value of the letter H, which is 104. That means that if you store the small h letter into a string, Go actually stores the byte value 104. That's pretty interesting, right? If we look at the ASCII table right here, we can see that the decimal value of 104 indeed represents the small letter H. But how do you get the value h out of the string? In order to do that, you need to convert byte to string. We have not talked about byte conversions yet, but let me quickly give you a small taste of what conversions look like. In order to convert bytes into string, you can use the string function. I will go into more detail here as soon as we talk about conversion functions. See, now you get the letter h. Now let us talk about a special feature of strings, and that is immutability. Once created, a string is immutable. That means that you cannot change single elements of the string. Let's say you would try to change the first element and store the capital case H into it. The compiler tells you that you cannot assign the first element of S because strings are immutable. What you can do though is reassigning a new value into the variable. See, replacing the value of the string variable works just fine, but trying to change the string itself does not work. So keep that in mind, once a string itself is created, it is immutable and thus cannot be changed. 
The last basic type I'm going to talk about is a rune. As you know from before, a byte is an alias for a new int 8, thus a UTF-8 character. A rune is an alias for int 32, so it can hold more bits compared to a new int 8 number. But why is that important? Humans are pretty good with coming up with new languages, words or even symbols that represent feelings. But to actually represent these symbols, the computer needs more space. And that's what runes are for. A rune compared to a string with double quotes can be initialized with single quotes. If we again take the letter H and print out the rune, we get the value 104. But if we change H to the smiley face and run the code again, we get a much higher number. A number that is higher than the maximum number of U and 8. I'm sorry to take a detour here, but I want to show you something to make this point a little more clear. Let me quickly define the string S with the smiley face. You can use the conversion functions byte array and rune array to convert strings to arrays of their respective types. And you can also use the length function to print out the length of a string. If you print out all of them, you can directly see that the length of a string is 4. And the same goes for the array of bytes, whereas the array of runes has a size of 1. This makes it clear that strings are internally stored as byte arrays and that special characters, runes, take up 4 bytes. I know this might be a bit confusing, and it actually is a quite complex topic. But the good thing is, most of the time you can simply work with strings and let go do the conversions internally. The last thing we need to talk about is the zero value of string types. In case of strings, the zero value is the empty string. And in case of runes, since they are a true alias for int32, the zero value is the number zero. Okay, we covered a lot of ground today. We talked about all the basic types in Go, as well as their different flavors and their zero values. And that is it for today. If you want to see more videos like this, please like this one and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And of course watch all my videos at least once a day. I heard that this is the best thing you can do to become a better programmer. <laughs> oh my god. Why are you watching this? Okay, until next time, keep on coding.